what everybody wants to know is what is the AMA technique? It's a very good question. It's a light based uh, touch therapy. It works on the sensory activational points within the body. I've seen to have found a code that seems to work well. For me to describe it to somebody, I used to have difficulty when I first started, but with the invention of the, t uh, the touchscreen iPhone, it's very simple. If I touch the right icon with the right amount of pressure and the right amount of timing, it will open up that program. If I hold it too lo long, it will go into a state of irritation and start to shake. And I think the body's the same. The body to me, the brain is the hard drive. The body is the touch screen, or if you want to call it a keyboard. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of knowing which key, maybe a master key, which point on the body here is the master key to change the value of all other points mm -hmm. or all other keys. Mm -hmm. So it's a very simple mechanism. Today it's so easy. The great thing about it is working on the computer system. If I give your computer the right information, it will recalibrate that information and give feedback. Mm -hmm. Then I, do, I see your, your body doing the same thing. I give you the information. Your brain goes and recalibrates, reevaluates and readjust the muscle to suit. Mm -hmm. It's time delayed. Um, you can only put in the incorrect number so many times before it rejects it. Mm -hmm. So our principle, long before the touch screen was out, my principle was the value of three. And these values are how many times can you put the incorrect password in to your own computer or to your bank card. Mm -hmm. So the principle is simple. Mm -hmm. We already use it. The other part about it is how quick it works. Mm -hmm. That once the brain has got the message and the body's got the message, it wants to work with that. It doesn't want to sit there in a state of rest until it's forgotten what the message was. So what we do is we get the body to, to move and get into an action to prove there's been a change. Mm. So uh, the difference between this therapy and many, in trigger therapy or some of the pressure therapies, they are forcing the muscle to submit. And when it submits, then they manipulate. This isn't. This is a touch enough to get the brain to curiously work out what is at fault here and self-correct. So we work with the muscle? We work with the muscle. And we don't wait till the muscle breaks down, right? No. Okay. The, uh, the other parts are the timing. Hmm. How often do I need it? If it is pain, I, my focus is reducing pain. And that is again by light touch. There's a principle in the AMA technique called make nice. Mm -hmm. Someone said, where did you get that principle from? I said, every time I fell over and hurt my knee, when I was really young, my mother used to kiss it better. And it worked, mm -hmm. it worked. As I got a bit older, uh, the kisses round, but the nice touches were in. And so I'm working on a system that was given to us by our mothers, accepted by our mothers, but not accepted by scientists. Mm -hmm. And how many countries are you pretty active right now, in? In uh, around 35 countries we've been in at some stage and we are teaching at, at stages. The number is growing quickly by invitation. Mm -hmm. It's not we search it out. We are invited back mm -hmm. and we are invited into there. The game we want, the idea is to keep it simple. It's a layman's therapy. Mm -hmm. It isn't an academic therapy. And I don't want to change that. Mm -hmm. I want mothers to have the ability to assist their children. I want men out bush, just normal everyday guys who has a friend that gets hurt mm. to be able to assist, not wait till a recovery unit turns up. So you don't say that this technique is just uh, for people from the medical field? Definitely not. Okay. I believe it's the first aid, it's muscle first aid. I yeah. believe it's the first run of the ladder. I believe that the other people come above us in, in their understanding, be it a nurse, be it a physio, be it an OT, 
be a, a doctor, be whatever. I am just there to assist pain and discomfort. My job is to give the first comfort point. Mm. So at present, we've got first aid for respiratory problems. We have first aid for cuts and abrasions, but there is no first aid for muscle release mm -hmm. and muscle trauma. And that's what I am, the first aider. What is my benefit learning this technique? What do you say? The benefit's not for you, the benefit's for your client. So my priority is to my client, not to a modality or to a company. My priority is to uh, pain and relief towards the client. And I'll do my utmost mm -hmm. under the Good Samaritan Act to get that result. And who can benefit from the Emma Technique? Everybody. Mm -hmm. It's not meant to be a standalone, it's meant to just assist. And assist means in its own right, or assist with whatever else you're doing. So it's an assistive therapy, if you were to, it's complementary. It works with. But the great thing about it are the simple little moves that can help a mother help a child, a trainer help it, uh, their, their students. Um, it can help teachers teach. Uh, in yoga or in other forms of therapy, personal trainers, mm. therapists, but it's, there's not an educational standard that goes with it. If there was a test that should be held for all these therapies, it should be on caring, but we haven't developed one yet. It's not an ac academic qualification you need, it's the ability to care that you need. Mm -hmm. and, to, and the lack of judgment I think today, quite often, we are judging too many on our own principles and not allowing people to have their own, own set of values. And we go in with our set of values, imposing them on them. This technique is made so that we accept everyone. So that's why it's called a chameleon approach to body therapies. We adapt to every client, no matter race, religion, doesn't matter. We're gonna work with them for their benefit. And so that's what I think the people that will benefit are everybody. Okay. Ross, would you be so kind and share with us the difference between or the differences or the difference between the lower modules and the upper module for just in case when people wanted to learn it? Yes. The most important modules that anyone ever learns, of course, is the first module. But what I've done on the first module, it is a module that you would utilize or check 100% of the time. In other words, it's the base. On a good base, you can build a tin shed or a castle. It's up to you. But at least you've got to have a sound base first. So the soundness is in the base of the therapy. And it covers the mental as well as physical in that first therapy. Basically, if you learned just module one and two and walked out, you can create changes on individuals, great changes, and not go any further. The difference between that and module six, and module six, EP6, is where we've put together all, it's come together, every part of the puzzle. In every module is a part to a puzzle. It's in module six that the picture comes clear. Each part of each module comes together as a piece to the puzzle. And in the end of it, module six is the heart of it all. How it all, all works together. So it's a collating of prior learning, putting it all together to understand it and to see the value of what you got. But the best came first. Mm. It's where the, the substance is. It's where the principles are. It's the principles of Emma Technique that are registered not the moves. The moves can be adapted, it's the principle. And to register that principle like I have, it was not around when I first registered it. Mm -hmm. And if you were to talk about Bowen therapy, Bowen therapy registered principle of take slack, challenge, move forward. Emma Technique has a different principle. Mm -hmm. There is this Bowen thing we have to clear up because um, I heard you first have to learn Bowen and then you can learn Emmett. What do you say about that? That's good marketing from the Bowen side of things. That was their marketing, but that was never ever true. 
I was in practice before Tom Bowen died. There was no Bowen therapy when I was first in practice. When I was seeing the amount of student uh, clients that I was before Tom Bowen died, they never changed after learning Bowen. The numbers were still attained, the same because I was limited to the amount of hours in the day that I could work. Mm. I was. I do believe that was brought on by the marketers of Bo Bowen at the time. That's funny because you have a very good relationship to Aussie Ranch, who who set up the Bowtech thing and. and I did have a good a relationship, and I, and I believe that he did a massive job in bringing out another man's technique. The talent, the the talent is not in being the guru, the man who does everything. And there are many a men better than me, many therapists better than me, but what they haven't got the uh, the ability to do is share what they do, to describe a way to pass on the message that they already have. All I've been able to do was take my own message and deliver it. I'm a postman. Mm -hmm. I deliver a message, I hope you get it. Mm -hmm. What I admire Ozzy Wrench from is he took someone else's message. He put it together and he delivered it and he did well. And The trouble with Bowen in, in many cases, like, why did I stop at level EP6? Because if I kept going, I would start to draw on other people's abilities to sell my course. Mm. And therefore, I would become, uh, I would start to plagiarize what I do. Mm. And I was listening and seeing that happening mm. within the limiting work that they had. Um, I met Romney Smeaton, the last student of Tom Bone, and he took a class with you, right? Yeah, he took many classes with me. He came over with me in 2009. I brought, Romney came over as a friend with both myself and Karen McKenzie. Uh, and I introduced him to people who had done courses with me so he could speak about Tom on, on these evenings. It wasn't to promote Emmett. He wasn't here to promote Emmett. He was here to give a second opinion of what Tom was doing and what was happening to Bowen therapy. Uh, so to, uh, he was giving out and uh, changing some of the um, misguided uh, information that was being put out by many people. He wrote you a very nice letter. Can you summarize for the people outside What, he's, what, he, what he told you. Yeah, it's a beautiful letter. Um, it compares me to Tom, uh, which is a nice comparison. And as he said there, since meeting me, he, um, he uses Emmett in a lot of his treatments and that, um, that he's more using more and more and that he, uh, he believed that it works extremely well with the principles of Tom Bowen. The principles of Tom Bowen are not always the principles of Bowen therapy. They have changed a lot. I have the original, two sets of original notes, 1988 and 1989. You showed me. Yeah, and in there, there was already variations coming within one year of training. I got my first diploma in, in Bowen therapy in 1988, September 88. I got it again in 1989 and again in 1991. So I have exposure to Bowen, but I was a full-time, highly qualified therapist prior to learning Bowen. It was just another one of those things that you take on board mm. to to help your understanding. And, and it, it, it resonated with me because I was, there was a man on the same level as I was. We were, we're not set up as guru or educational experts. We are just good therapists, mm. him and me and mm. many others like me. This is what his <clears throat> own, what Tom Bowen's own daughter uh, recognized. She sent you a letter too. Yes, she did. Uh, she, she watched me work and said that she'd seen similarities between what I did and what her dad did. And, and she liked to put out her support towards me in anything that I had to do with her dad's name. It was a beautiful letter, and I, and I cherish those letters, any, any recognition like that. Um, I, I have them there, 
and I've been given them with the right to use them as I wish. Um, today I don't find I'm, I need to use them because uh, most people are believing what I did but there was a time there when some factions were going out and trying to belittle my technique through belittling me. Mm -hmm. What have been the excitement side of doing this? I think the excitement I see is when a therapist takes a primitive animal like a horse or a dog and sees the simple technique that was given them to create changes on a primitive animal that humans find difficult to accept. <laughs> I quite often reckon that the dumbest animal might be on two legs rather than four.